Hey everybody, welcome back. How are you doing today? Uh, as you can see, I've got my Hey Dora shirt. I'm drinking my Godzilla energy drink there. Got my big Godzilla rubber head beside me. That's because I just got back from watching uh, Godzilla Minus One. It's uh, Sunday today and I think it just released here in Japan on Friday. So just fresh out of the theater, just got back. And I thought we could talk about it a little bit. Got my notes here in front of me, so this is kind of going to be off the cuff. Uh, the first part, I'm just going to give my general feeling about it and views, non-spoiler. Then we'll jump into kind of more story specifics and spoilers and stuff like that. Uh, so basically, um, I, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I think, uh, you know, coming right off the back of Shin Godzilla... That was a really different take on Godzilla, a really unique style and things like that. And uh, so it was smart of them not just to go uh, into a sequel of Shin Godzilla and not also not to just not to revert back to regular Godzilla and then also not to go into just weird Shin Godzilla territory. You know, he was really different looking and, and his the way he did attacks and all that kind of stuff was really unique and weird. So they could have just pushed further in the weird direction or just gone back to very vanilla Godzilla. But this one, the minus one version, it was smart in that they set it in, an, in a time where we've never really seen Godzilla, you know, except for the original movie, which was just in 1954. This one takes place just, just at the end of World War II. And so it was a really unique setting for him. We've never really seen him that far back except for maybe the first movie, which was in the, you know, about a decade after or so. So uh, I guess we'll just kind of go over some basic things here. The cast of characters was really good. Um, a lot of these movies, both the Japanese ones and the American ones, um, just monster movies in general, they kind of have a hard time with the human characters. They don't really know what to do with them. And either they're barely in the movie or they they're in it too much. Like in the Monsterverse movies, I don't really like those ones too much because I find the human characters are just really dry, really bland, and they're just there too much. But um, in this film, they the characters were in it a lot. There's a, a Koichi is the main character, and uh, he's basically in every scene. The movie revolves around him. Uh, but he was really well done, and the other characters were really well done as well. So I didn't mind so much human human presence there. Uh, Godzilla's not in it a whole lot. I mean, he's in it for sure. There's lots of Godzilla, but he, he's not constantly in it. There's a lot of human stuff going on on the side. Um, but when he does show up, he really shows up. There's a, he has a lot of impact, and I'll, I'll get into him in a second. But I find that the, the balance there of really interesting human stuff were balanced out the, the less present Godzilla stuff. Um, and both of those elements were very strong. So it worked out well. Because this movie, like I said, is set just after World War II. It, it ends, basically, or sorry, it starts right when World War II is ending. And so the cities are all destroyed at this point, basically, from all the bombing and stuff like that. And it shows the characters kind of rebuilding their lives over a few years. Um, it starts in 1945, and it goes up to maybe 1947, I think. I forget the exact time that it shows, but something like that. So it's just a few years, and we see these characters kind of getting back to regular lives. Uh, but Koichi, uh, the main character, he's kind of haunted by stuff that happened with Godzilla uh, at the end of World War II which I'll explain a little bit later. As for Godzilla, without getting into spoilers, uh, I really like his design. I think he looks great. He's gigantic. Uh, he looks more like classic Godzilla than Shin Godzilla did, um, but he's still really unique, um, especially in some of the things that he does. So for example, he's got like a, like a white patch, an off-white patch under his eye and a few on his body. Those have uh, some story-specific things that they're there for. Also, I think in the trailers people probably saw already how he charges up his dorsal fins. They kind of pop out of his back a bit as it goes up his back 
and then once he's ready to charge they push down and the blast comes out that's a really interesting look I don't want to spoil anything so he's he's powerful he's strong um, but he's he, he he's very vicious this Godzilla he's to me he's kind of just like a like a demon or something so all most other Godzilla's in the past except for maybe the first one and maybe one or two more they've all even if they've been kind of the antagonist they've had a bit of a sympathetic side or something like in Shin Godzilla where he's just like an insect he's just kind of going forward he's almost mindless he's not really evil or anything he's just kind of walking but in this one he is evil I think <laughs> he came across as very monstrous and, and very cold and just angry he's just angry all the time he's very ferocious and angry and demon-like one thing that he reminded me of is like an angry cat. <laughs> There's some moments in the movie where they need to get his attention and stuff like that. And he's and he's you know going after certain things and it just reminded me of like an angry cat attacking some flies or something like that. Uh, it'll make more sense in the spoiler part. But he's fun and he's he's scary. So there's like a moment, I think it's in the trailer where the characters are on a small boat and Godzilla's halfway out of the water just like up to his up to his nose kind of in the water so you see his fins and the top of his face and he's coming after this small little you know tugboat size boat and the shot is from the back of this boat and you're seeing him coming and it's he's really intimidating he's quite scary that way and the movie does a good job of that showing like the real sense of scale and just how scary that thing would be so in previous Godzilla movies, I don't, I'm never scared of him, you know, in like something like Shin Godzilla, he's just, he's big and creepy and weird and dangerous. And I, I like that, that movie's excellent, uh, but I was never really scared of him in that or in the American MonsterVerse ones, he was never scary at all. Um, often they, they get that sense of scale and just how destructive he would be, but he's never like scary really, except uh, if we go way back to the first film in 1954, he is a little scary. He's weird. He's, he's scary. But in this film, you really get a sense of just how terrifying this thing would be coming after you or walking through the city and stuff. He blatantly kills some people, a lot of people. There's definitely moments where he's just walking through the city and he's just stepping on huge groups of people and stuff like that. He doesn't really care at all. Uh, usually they don't show Godzilla being such a blatant murderer of humans, but in this case he, he definitely is. Um, so that was so he's just he's very evil. He's very demonic and evil, it seems like. Uh, he doesn't really have a he has more of a personality than Shin Godzilla or the original Godzilla. But he's not as humanized as, say, the American, recent American movies, where he's just got full-on personality. He's just more like an angry animal or something like that, which works well. It's, it's good. The CG in it, uh, for the most part, it, it's good. It holds up. There's a few moments where the ships are going through the water, and I could tell that like the, um, the water hitting the boats at the side of the boats looked a little weird, or like when Godzilla would come out of the water the it's just like they didn't quite get the water effects right at a few moments but it, it's super minor like it didn't distract from the film at all uh, Godzilla looks really good uh, I don't know if they used motion capture this time or not there's some points where he he looks a little stiff when he's walking around and I don't mean Godzilla stiff but just looked a little strange um, it looked a, maybe a little too animated or something but uh, it didn't distract from the film. I mean, Shin Godzilla also had some weird, rough CG sometimes, but that movie was great. I enjoyed it. So I'm not too worried about that. As long as everything else is really good, then I can overlook that kind of stuff pretty easy. Uh, I really like his design. He, he's thick. He's massive. Like, his feet are huge in this. He's got really, really big feet. And he's this scaly armor look is really good. I like that. And he's almost like a like a dusty brown kind of color. He's very different looking than previous ones. He's not as visually dark, I think. There's a fun use of like military ships and things like that. A lot of this movie takes place on the water. There's a lot of kind of water combat or 
just destruction of ships and stuff like that. So if you're into seeing these old Japanese military ships getting sunk and ripped in half and stuff, I think you'll enjoy this. The destruction in the city is quite big, and that'll be a spoiler thing I'll get into, but there's a lot of these really cool 1940s type of buildings just getting wiped out and stuff. There's also... A, it's, it's nice that they set it just post-war Japan because you get to see a lot of that from the perspective of the Japanese people there and you know they're living in little shacks and just there's no windows the walls are all broken up and stuff like that and people are just you know cooking outside and things like that because they don't have anything else their homes are all just gone and wiped out uh, as far as the strength of this Godzilla like how would he do compared to other Godzillas there's a few moments where he takes damage that I don't know if other Godzillas would take that damage or not. Like, he's getting directly hit by tanks and things like that, and he brushes it off. But there's some spoiler things where he definitely takes some damage because of a certain attack. So, I don't know. I don't know how how would other Godzillas fare to that situation. They, they would probably fare better, I guess. But I kind of like Godzilla not being just super invulnerable to everything. Uh, it's kind of interesting when he can take some damage and in this movie they handle him taking damage in an interesting way and they kind of instead of just making him super invincible they do it in a different way that's actually really interesting and I think it ties into his his character and just kind of the thing what's made him what he is instead of just being invulnerable to stuff they've kind of handled it in a different way that's interesting Overall, you know, I would say it was a really good film. I would give it high ratings. I think it was really enjoyable. As long as you aren't afraid of seeing Godzilla taken in different directions, like Shin Godzilla did, then I think you can enjoy this movie a lot. Um, once again, the characters are really good. They're all enjoyable to watch. Their story is interesting. And, you know, I'll admit I, I might have teared up a little bit at the end, which is not something I expected from a Godzilla movie. Uh, but I've heard a lot of other people did too, and uh, and I can see why. They're, the characters are, you know, that good that you're seeing stuff happening to them, and you care about them, and, you, and you're actually, you know, maybe rooting for them. It was a weird experience because Godzilla is so evil in this <laughs> that it was one of the rare times where I was actually kind of rooting for the people to beat him. And it's normally not like that for me. I always want Godzilla to pull through at the end, right? For once, I was like, no, come on, take this guy down, this, this bastard. So it was interesting. It was really a unique experience. But yeah, I would give it a high ratings, whatever it would be, an eight or nine or something like that. And uh, it's just, it's fun to see him in a unique setting. And I hope that they keep doing that. I hope I don't want them to do sequels to Shin Godzilla or Godzilla Minus One or stuff. I want them just to kind of hand over this creature to different directors each time and let them put him way in the future, way in the past, uh, current settings, wherever, however, and just do interesting different takes on him and different spins on him. And I think that that creature, Godzilla, lends himself so well to that kind of thing that it doesn't really matter so much how he's designed or where he's put, you can still have a really interesting story around him and still he'll be Godzilla. Especially in this day and age when you have, you know, MCU and DCEU and the MonsterVerse and all these things that are just, they don't know what to do with themselves anymore and they're just kind of treading water over and over again. So I think it's a smart idea to just make these really cool, interesting, artistic, standalone films of this, this monster and see what you can do with them. I would like to see them maybe make another one that has another kaiju in it for him to verse against. Um, still, once again, make it a unique take on this stuff and don't make it a sequel, but maybe introduce some other monster for him to fight or something. That'd be fun. But uh, okay. Now we're going to jump into spoilers. So, like I said, I recommend it. If you don't want to see the spoilers, then end it here. And we'll go over kind of the basic story and then some fun stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the basic story here. I took notes after I watched the movie, just to give a rundown of the very basic um, main points of the story. So, uh, the main character is Koichi. He is in the military 
and just towards the end of the war, he so he's a, a, a fighter pilot, like a bomber pilot, and I think the idea is that he is like the next day he's supposed to fly and maybe kamikaze his airplane into an enemy ship. Um, I, I don't remember exactly if he's supposed to blow himself up with it or just do a bombing run, but the it seems like the odds are that he's not going to make it if he does this. So he lands his airplane on a small island with a, just a little military Japanese military outpost where they, I guess that island is for fixing machines and so like airplanes and stuff like that. So he lands there and he says like, oh, there's something wrong with my airplane. But the truth is, that's not the truth. And he just doesn't want to do this run. He's just scared to go and do this run the next day. So there's a, maybe about like 10 guys on this island at this little outpost, very small. So he's talking to them and they're like the the main head mechanic. He, he kind of figures out that he's like, I went over your ship or your, your plane. There's nothing wrong. And that's when he realizes that, OK, you're just afraid to go and stuff. That night, there's a, a warning alarm that goes off and then they see like this this mini Godzilla shows up. So this this is this scene is very much kind of like a, a Jurassic Park scene in the original Jurassic Park when the T-Rex breaks out. It's kind of like that. And then he also kind of looks like the 98 Godzilla from the American, uh, original American Godzilla film, which is funny. He still looks like this new Godzilla, but he's about the size of like the... Hmm... I guess he's smaller than the 98 one, but he's bigger than the T-Rex. He's somewhere in between. So he's going through this little this little base. Oh, so the guys hide in this, this little dugout. And they say to Koichi, like, go into your plane. Ah, the rain started. Give me one sec. Sorry, just started pouring out. Um, so they say to Koichi, like, jump into the cockpit and shoot him. So he's basically right in front of the guns. And so Koichi's scared, of course, to do it, but but the guy's like, no, no, go, 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 you have to do it. So he runs out and he jumps into his airplane, and uh, but he's just shaking, he can't fire. And so one of the other guys that are hiding out basically freaks out and he starts to shoot this mini Godzilla. And then all hell breaks loose and they all just start to fire, but Koichi doesn't, he's just terrified and sitting in his fighter pilot, um, or sorry, in the cockpit. This mini Godzilla starts like stomping towards them and then everyone's just running and it's just it's just chaos. And so Godzilla is like stepping on guys and squishing them with his tail. He he grabs some guys, you know, this is the guy, he grabs him kind of in half like that and flings them around and stuff. Throw he doesn't eat anybody, and you don't see him really like rip anybody in half, but he picks them up halfway on their bodies and he can just kind of tosses them. He does this to maybe three or four guys. Um and then other guys, he just straight up squishes them with his feet and stuff. He's he's quite vicious. Koichi, how does he... He gets out of the, the jet and he runs. And maybe Godzilla bites the jet or hits... Something happens, I forget. But basically, the, the jet has like a bomb on the bottom. So it blows up and the Godzilla is there when it blows up. The Godzilla is fine, but Koichi gets tossed aside and he goes unconscious and we see one other guy is still alive and the guy's like starts to drool like he's just he's he snapped from seeing all this crazy stuff so anyways koichi wakes up like in the morning and the building's all destroyed and the the his plane is all burnt out and everything godzilla's gone and the one guy who was kind of going crazy he's now he's lined up all these dead bodies and covered them and just kind of you know, respectfully trying to cover them up. And he blames Koichi. He's like, you know, it's because you didn't fire, so these guys are all dead. You see this, they're all dead. And he's, he's you know, so angry at him. And then we kind of cut to, like, when a lot of Japanese soldiers are on a boat, and I guess they're heading home now. And that guy who got his leg injured and blamed Koichi, he hands Koichi, like, a little pack. And it turns out later we see that that's like a... Um, a stack of photos of each of the guys that had died so it's like them with their families and stuff so that guy had collected their personal like photos and kind of given them to Koichi as a reminder that he he led to these guys their deaths so Koichi goes back home and I think he I think he's in Tokyo he's maybe in like the countryside just outside of Tokyo and but it's all just it's nothing it's all been bombed out uh, his family is dead he, he discovers that his family's dead and his house is just ruins now it's just burnt out ruins 
Okay, so later he's going through the market and he's just eating some soup. Everyone's just trying to survive. This is where you see like people have all these makeshift little things where they're making soup for people and, and uh, everything's just, just garbage, just ruined. So he's having some soup or something and a woman runs kind of past him. She's escaping from some people and she's carrying something and she, she gives it to him. And then she keeps running. She's just like, here, take this. And then she keeps going. And then he looks and it's a baby. <laughs> just wrapped up this baby. And he's like, oh. And so she runs away and the guys keep chasing her. They didn't notice she handed off the baby. So he's there. They don't really show how long, but he's probably there for like an hour or more. Just with this baby, he's just sitting there. He doesn't know what to do. And he goes to put the baby like on the bench and he's just going to leave it because he doesn't know what to do. But, you know, he can't quite bring himself to just abandon this child. So he picks her up and... He starts to walk and then he bumps into her again and, and she was kind of like hiding out from these guys. Uh, so they go back to her ramshackled little hut where she's been staying and uh, she's got her kid there. The father, I, I don't remember, I think maybe the father died or he just isn't around, he's gone now. But for whatever reason, she's on her own, her family's all gone. And so he ends up staying there with her for basically the rest of the film we see them bit by bit building this place up adding in proper wood for the walls getting furniture things like that but it's pretty rough for the first like for the first year or whatever it's just the the ceilings leaking they're cold all this kind of stuff um, but they stay there for a while and they the the baby is Akiko and the woman is Noriko so the mother is Noriko so they just kind of help each other out and stuff and then he eventually ends up getting a job on a boat uh so this this ship this boat it it goes through the ocean and it kind of on the there's a chain on it and on the bottom is like this big blade and it goes through the waters and it finds the naval mines and it cuts the chain so the naval mine lifts up to the surface and then on the back they've got this kind of machine gun this kind of uh mounted machine gun and they fire it and they blow up the naval mines after they get a safe distance. So they're going through doing that and he's, he's getting a bit more money and um, she's starting to do better too, Noriko. And uh, eventually she gets a job. And so the neighbor that was went a little crazy before, she seems to be okay now. And she's helping watch the daughter, Akiko, um, while those two are working and stuff like that. So up to this point, point they say that there had been some attacks on ships boats and naval ships and stuff where they had just been you know ripped right through and broken in half and everything like that so one day when koichi is out on the ship doing his work with with his crew there's a there's like a doctor character there's the ship's captain and there's a young guy who's also working on the ship i think just those three so they're doing their thing and then godzilla shows up or no, first they find like a, a destroyed ship that's kind of floating in the water and it's just been torn right in half, basically. A big chunk has been basically bit out of it. They're talking about that and then Godzilla shows up. Now, a sign that Godzilla is showing up, this is interesting. So way, way back at the beginning, when Koichi, um, you know, had his airplane on that little island and he was sitting at the edge of the water, he noticed that there was some fish uh, bobbing up to the surface these dead fish and out of their mouths were these big like tumorous disgusting things growing out of their mouths and uh, This happens again when they're on their little their little mine hunting ship But this time it's like a lot of fish are popping up big fish and small ones and just hundreds and hundreds of fish are popping up So I guess what this means is that like because he's so radioactive when Godzilla comes near through the ocean it's like immediately mutating these fish. It kills them, but it, it mutates them and they get these bulbous tumors out of their mouths. So I guess he's so highly radioactive that this is what happens. But Koichi knows that this is a sign that Godzilla's coming. So he's telling the guys like, quick, we gotta go. And then you start to see his, you know, in the distance, his dorsal fins are coming up out of the water. And, and then, so the boat's taking off, Godzilla's following them. So they drop, they have a couple of those big naval mines on the ship for, I don't know why, but they had them, two of them just on the back of the ship. So they toss one into the water and I forget, it goes kind of like towards his back 
And Koichi is like a really good shot with this this gun, so he fires it and it blows up on Godzilla, Godzilla's back. Sorry, my mistake. The the first one is attached to like a cable, so they can detonate it whenever they want. So once it gets onto Godzilla's back, they detonate it. But the second one, it goes off the boat, but that little cable, that the detonator cable, uh, pops out. So they can't detonate it, of course. Uh, but it goes into Godzilla's mouth. And you can see he just kind of has his ball in his mouth. And so I think it's Koichi and he, he fires at that ball at the mine and it explodes. And so Godzilla kind of stops for a minute in the water and he, his head's kind of halfway out of the water and we see that his whole cheek has been like blown out basically. Um, basically the, the side of his face is just exploded. And that starts to heal up. So kind of like Wolverine, you just start to see the meat and the bones and all that fuse up. And that's why he has that white kind of patch under his eye, because that's what that is. That's like the new scar tissue skin that's healed itself. So he has this across his body, just different areas. And as the movie progresses and he has more, <clears throat> you know, more attacks coming his way, he kind of gets a little bit more patchy with this white scar tissue skin. But it's a cool effect. It looks really good. He it's all meaty and disgusting, and then it bzzz, uh, fills in. So of course this makes him more angry. But then a naval ship shows up. Maybe like a Japanese naval ship shows up, and it fires at him, and it takes his attention away. And then he goes underwater, and you see a blue glow start, and then just his beam fires up out of the water, and it rips through the middle of the ship. But uh, that gave those guys, I think, a chance to escape. Or Godzilla just leaves after, I forget. But uh, yeah, he just that's the first time we see his beam. We don't actually see him do it, but it just shoots up through the water. So then there's more kind of um, just human stuff going on. We see Koichi, he's having nightmares about Godzilla. Um, it's an interesting thing how the film really shows how coming across this kind of creature would really mess somebody up. Yeah, he's just, he's freaking out, he's, he's having these nightmares about the, the first time he saw Godzilla, uh, he doesn't want to really talk about it too much. It's an interesting uh, take on like, what would it really be like if somebody came face to face with this thing and survived? Uh, it would just, it would break your mind, basically, it's just so terrifying and crazy to see that kind of thing. So anyways, there's some of that, some human stuff going on, and then we see Godzilla comes to the city. Now, uh, Noriko, the woman who he's living with, and this is an interesting re relationship because they don't have a romantic relationship. They never, like, they don't kiss, nothing like that. They're just, they're living together, they're taking care of this girl, Akiko, and um, it's, it's unique because you would expect them to the kind of Hollywood thing would just be, okay, make them at some point kiss each other or say they love each other or something, and that's it. But they, they don't. Or like the little girl calls him father, but he's like, I'm not, not not your father, right? So it's an interesting take on that. I like how they did that. But anyways, Noriko goes to work one day, and that's when Godzilla shows up in the city. And he's just, he's just walking through and destroying all these cool old buildings and stuff. But he's just... He's just squishing everybody. He's just smashing through buildings. People, are, the news is trying to like record him and show it, and he like destroys the building that the news news guys are on top of and kills them and all this stuff. Um, so I think in the trailers you see him bite onto like a train and lift it up. So Noriko is inside that train, um, and like the the cars underneath her have fallen down. Godzilla is biting onto this train, and hers is kind of dangling there, and she ends up dangling at the bottom of it. And uh, he just happens to pass over top of like a water tower that's open at the top. So she drops into that and then is able to get down. And then meanwhile, Godzilla's walking around. He's crushing people, killing people and everything. Um, really blatantly killing people. Like <laughs> big amounts of people just get totally squished under his feet. Um, like I said, this is a very like mean, vicious Godzilla. So as everybody's running away, Noriko ends up being one of those people that kind of gets into that crowd, but she she's just kind of dazed and like almost just like walking like she's just She's just been through a really traumatic thing And so she's just wet and like walking while everyone else is running to escape and she ends up getting pushed down And Godzilla's getting closer and then at the last minute Koichi shows up and grabs her and he's like come on. Let's go. Let's go. He managed to find her and so they're running 
and then Godzilla gets distracted. He was getting close, and then he gets distracted by tanks. There's some tanks that show up, and they start to shoot at him. And they're just, it's just an onslaught of shots at him. Bah, 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 bah. And all the smoke builds up around him, and then you, the smoke passes, and you see he's fine. Like, he just didn't affect him at all. He didn't care. He took no damage. But I think it pissed him off. <laughs> so he starts to charge up his beam, and this is in the trailer when it... Boom, 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 boom. His, his dorsal fins are, like, popping out. And then he breathes in, which is kind of cool. He, this really long breathing in. And then the dorsal fins pop down, and he just fires out his beam. And it goes, I forget, I guess it goes towards where the tanks were. But the effect of it's really cool. So it shoots where that was. There's a massive explosion. The explosion shoots out away from it, and then it sucks in. And the scale of it is basically like a nuclear bomb that goes off. You, you even see a giant mushroom cloud. Uh, blocks and blocks are just destroyed and decimated. Koichi and Noriko are next to each other. She pushes him into an alleyway and she gets blown away just with everything else. She just gets destroyed with everything else. Um, he's only protected because he was between like these stone buildings. But he steps out and he sees it's just everything's just gone. So it basically was like a nuclear blast that went off, which is makes sense for Godzilla because that's kind of what he's made of. I forget, I think he just leaves after that. He just kind of continues on his way and heads to the ocean or something. Oh, and after he does his blast, he's a little bit on fire. It's really cool. So he does his, his big atomic breath and then there's little embers, little glowing embers around his body on certain areas. So I guess when he does it, it, it hurts him, it's damaging him when he does it, his own his own body. Which I guess maybe from the inside out, it's like burning through or something. It's a cool look though. So of course Koichi is very distraught that uh, Noriko died and they have to go back and comfort the daughter and she doesn't quite get what's going on. And like the neighbor is there to help take care of her and like Koichi's friends from the boat they're there to kind of help him too but uh <clears throat> it was such a huge devastating attack on the city that people are kind of come together and they have to devise a plan on how to destroy Godzilla so they come up with the idea that they're going to get him out into the ocean <clears throat> they're going to have two ships and the, the two ships will have a line maybe two lines or one line between them maybe one line between them and on this line are are going to be basically like some jets and then some like some inf huge inflatable rafts. And so the idea is they're going to wrap these this cord around him. They're going to take him using the jet propulsion things. I forget what they were. But they're going to bring him down to the, the very bottom of the ocean. They're going to pick a really deep point. Keep him down there for a minute. And then they're going to launch him back up when they set off those all these huge rafts. And the idea is basically to like, because of the pressure, it's going to destroy his body. The quick change in pressure is going to destroy his body. It's an interesting plan. It kind of reminds me of the Oxygen Destroyer in the original film. It doesn't work the same way, but it kind of has that same feel where they're just going to take him down into the ocean and just destroy his body. So the, the scientist comes up with this. The scientist uh, that works on the ship with Koichi. I forget his name. So they get, some people are like, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing this. This is a death run. And then some people will volunteer to do it. And they kind of start to, you know, work out the plan and everything like that. So it turns out they have a, an old World War II, well, I guess it's not old at the time, it was a few years old, but a World War II fighter jet. I don't know the name of it, I'm not really like a jet guy, a plane guy, but it's like backwards looking, so like the tail would normally be at the back of course, but this is at the front and the wings kind of point forward, but the cockpit's facing like what would look like the tail and the propellers at the back, I don't know the name of that, but it's a really unique looking uh, airplane. And so they need to distract Godzilla to get him to the right point. So they're going to use that airplane to do it. And Koichi says he's going to do it. And they also put a bomb on it so that if need be, he can kamikaze into Godzilla and just you know do as much damage as he can. So Koichi's thinking, okay, I'm not going to make it through this, but I'm not going to be afraid this time to do it like he was at the beginning of the film. And so he like takes out all his money and he, he leaves it or for no... So he takes out all, all his money and he sends it to each of the guys who died at the beginning of the film, like the families of those guys, because um, he feels guilty for that and he feels responsible for it. So he sends the money to them and then the guy who survived, who got his leg injured, 
he actually like shows up. He's like, what are you doing? Sending this and da 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 da. And he explains what's going on. Koichi explains what's going on. And so the guy, he's going to come and help out. And he's like a mechanic. So he helps prepare this airplane for this and everything. And so the day comes. So they, they have these things monitoring, like if he's going to show up, there's like these radiation monitors in the water. And they, they realize, okay, Godzilla's showing up. So they prepare everything, they get the ships out in the water and stuff. And then Godzilla makes his way onto land to like the countryside heading towards Tokyo again. And so in the countryside before he gets to the city, so it's kind of neat, you see him just walking through these old Japanese houses and destroying them and stuff. It's kind of a unique image that we hadn't really seen as much before in previous movies. And Koichi comes in and he, he, he's flying around Godzilla and he's just firing at him with like the machine guns or whatever. And this is where it reminded me of like a cat. So if you had a cat and you're like playing with a string and Godzilla's just kind of angry and swatting at it and stuff, he's kind of like that. But it, it works, it gets his attention and Koichi draws him back out into the ocean to where they need to activate the plan. So they get Godzilla, he, he makes it out to that area and then the boats, they start to go around him. So if my head is Godzilla, the boats go like this, they go around to wrap this thing around Godzilla's waist. Uh, there's a moment where like the boats have to pass each other because there's like the cable really high up So the boats have to pass around each other to get the cable over the other boat so they can really wrap it So they're like scraping against each other. It's kind of an interesting shot um, But it works and then they activate it and it propels Godzilla deep 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 underwater I think it's like 1500 meters or something. I forget the exact depth But it really rapidly boom, brings them right down to the bottom. Ah, so before that um, Godzilla starts to charge up his beam again because he's, you know, he's getting angry at these ships and at the airplane and stuff. And he fires his beam and it goes between the two ships. So he just misses, but it, it almost causes like a tsunami or something. Uh, and the ships are like trying to make it past this, but these are big like military ships. So they're okay. But um, anyways, I think he has a bit of a cooldown time between his shots. So he's slowly starting to charge up again and that's when they they launch him down under the water and he goes all the way to the bottom and then his charge just kind of turns off uh, so he's under there for a little bit and I, I forget like if they're trying to wait for a certain amount of time or how it works but they're looking at like the depth on a little readout on their on their boat and then they're like okay and they they inflate all the rafts and then they launch him back up and so he's sitting like just under the surface. I was a little confused at this point because like they're showing what I guess is the rafts and they're all just kind of bubbling at the surface. It's a little weird, but so you don't exactly see Godzilla at this moment, but you just see that they're like, <clears throat> I think they're struggling with it. So like the rafts are trying to go up and Godzilla is trying to go down or something like that. It's working, but then he's pulling on like the cables that are... Um, attaching him to the stuff and like starting to break that and break the ships a bit but then he finally he surfaces and his body is all like just bubbling and messed up from this rapid change in pressure and uh, it's really deforming him but then his healing factor right his healing ability is trying to fight that so he's he's got the white scar tissue and then he's like all bubbling up he's all weird looking um, and then he starts to charge up again because I think he, he broke the cable so now the ships can't really do anything to him and so he starts to charge up his beam again and he's about to fire at the ships and then Koichi flies his airplane right into Godzilla's mouth and then it, poof, it explodes, the bomb that was on it activates. <clears throat> you know, he just in the nick of time saves everybody. But then they see that he parachuted out, so he's safe. Which I thought he was, I thought he was dead, I thought he was going to be dead. But he parachutes out and then we see what happened to Godzilla. So from the mouth up is gone it just it exploded the top of his head and he's just just a mess <laughs> like there's no more Godzilla head there you see his bottom jaw and stuff his body starts to just break apart it's like hardening or something and then the 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 charge beam that was in him because his dorsal fin was still charged up that energy just kind of starts to zoom, shoot out of him and almost like wisps away just kind of these beams shoot out of him and just kind of go away and then his body just breaks apart and all the pieces fall into the water and start to sink. And then we see the ship comes back 
and uh, gets back to land. The, the two ships that did it, actually they're dragged by a bunch of other ships that came to help them because they were immobile in the water. So all these smaller ships showed up to rescue them and they pulled these ships back to land. And uh, so the woman who was watching Akiko, so Koichi had left like a, a note next to Akiko when she was sleeping, the little girl, and in it was like a bunch of money and I think like a like a deed to the land maybe or something. I forget exactly what it was in like a letter. So when that woman was watching Akiko, uh, somebody came with a telegram to their, to because she was in, in their house, not her house, this uh, woman. So she was in Koichi's house or Noriko's house watching Akiko. So a telegram came and she reads it. We don't see what's on it. But then later when at the end, when she shows up after the boat comes in, and Koichi gets off, she runs, she's holding Akiko, and she runs up to Ko- Koichi, and she shows him this letter, which again, we don't see what it is, this telegram. But he reads it, and he takes Akiko, and he, he runs off. And then we see he comes into a hospital, and lo and behold, Noriko is alive. She's all messed up, so her like face is all wrapped up, her arms all like broken and wrapped up and stuff. She's got, I think she's got like a tube in her arm and stuff, but she's there. And uh, so, surprisingly, she survived. And this was like the emotional part to see them reunited was a really touching moment. Because uh, the feeling up to that point was like, okay, Akiko, this little girl, she's lost her father, she lost her mother, and then she lost Koichi, seemingly, before we see the parachute. So, like, she's just going to be alone. It was very sad, but then, okay, everything worked out, and, and they're both alive. And so, they're, they kind of... We get the sense that they're going to maybe be a family now, altogether. But then there's an interesting shot where Noriko kind of moves her head to the side and the camera kind of zooms in on this area on her neck. And there's like a black, some black lines on her neck. Some kind of, I'm not sure if it was like a symbol or just some lines. But I, I guess we have to interpret it as something. And so two things maybe that I think it was. One, because... Godzilla is all radiation and nuclear. Her surviving that blast, she physically survived it, but maybe she got some kind of infection or like a radiation disease or something like that. And that's kind of representing that because people that really survived the bombings in World War II, the atomic bombs, um, they maybe survived the blasts, but then they got really sick after and died over the weeks and months and years after that. So it could be something like that, or kind of more fantasy-like, it could be something where her being in such close proximity to Godzilla and surviving his blast has now infected her with some kind of this, maybe this like healing mutation thing that Godzilla has, maybe that's in her or something weird, I don't know. It's never really explained what it is, but I think it's just left up to us to kind of figure out what that might be <clears throat> so that's the happy ending there but then there's a little extra thing at the end where we see a big piece of Godzilla meat floating uh, down into the ocean and it starts to bubble and shift and change and blah, 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 starts to grow so I guess he's not actually dead he's just took him a little while to heal out of that and so maybe there's going to be many Godzillas now because all those pieces are going to grow or maybe just maybe that's just like where his heart was or something like that and that's growing I don't know But uh, it's left up to our guess of what's going to happen. I don't know if there's going to be a sequel. Probably not. I I hope they just do another original thing after, but they could easily do one now because we see that he he maybe survived that somehow. Okay, so that's the basic rundown of the story with some spoilers. So I'm just going to go over a few notes that I made and see if I missed anything. So uh, on the island at the very beginning, when we have the mini Godzilla, uh, one of the guys says that that on that island for maybe centuries passed down through people there had been this legend of a thing called Godzilla um, that was around on that island so he is I guess an ancient creature this he was smaller but then I guess maybe because of nuclear bombs or something that made him grow and mutate bigger so uh, he does have a history on that island and that's how he gets his name is being called Godzilla by that old ancient legend I guess the, the, the roar and the music and stuff is straight out of the old ones. So the, the, it's the classic Godzilla theme. Do, 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 do. And it sounds, I don't know if it's they reuse that old track or if they, you know, had an orchestra do it again, but it sounds like the old one. 
And then the Roar 2 is really similar to the, the original. Um, I think they tweaked it a little bit to make it a little different, but it's basically the same, the same sound. It's the classic Godzilla Roar. It's maybe like a little deeper, I guess, than usual, or something about it doesn't sound quite as square, that squeaky, there's that background bending metal sound that he often has. It's not quite like that. It's a little bit deeper, I think. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. Basically, uh, I'm probably forgetting some stuff. I, you know, I, I just took a bunch of notes after I got out of the theater. That's why this is all random and kind of messy. But yeah, if you have any questions of specifics, let me know in the comments, I guess, and I'll do my best to answer that from what I can remember. Um, I didn't go into like, there's a lot of human interaction and stuff like that in it that I didn't go into too much, but uh, it's all well done. I enjoyed it a lot, and uh, I think it comes out in the West in next month in December. So I recommend it. If you can if you can go and see it, then you should go and see it. Okay, well that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you some other time. Bye-bye.